going to explore create contact lists and groups for different classes to where they can send out or share documents to every single student in their class just the one time so I don't have to constantly type in their addresses and their names and this is the way I've been doing it. I'm sure there are others. So once you're in your Google email, I get to my contact list by just going to mail and contacts. You can also go up these nine squares over here and select your contacts as well. Either way is just fine. <clears throat> Once I'm into my contacts, what I want to do first is just create a group. So if you scroll down, you can see I've got plenty of groups. Scroll down to the bottom. You probably won't have to scroll as far as I do. But down at the bottom, you'll see this new group option. So if you click the new group, enter it, let's call it, uh, phys uh, let's go Earth Science class and click OK. And now what you're going to do is you're going to select that Earth Science class. You should see it on the left hand side here. So we're going to select it. Shouldn't be any inside of here. So <clears throat> you can then just start typing the names of your students. I'll type my own children in here. So I got Chelsea, Weir, and if it's already in your contact group, you can actually click on it and it'll be there. Now you can actually, once you've got her name up, you can come over here and say um, Earth Science Group and you're going to click Apply. And she, she's in my contacts group, my physics group, and my Earth Science class. So we're going to click Apply. Now, some people may not be in your group at all. You might need to give them fake names, or not fake names, but give them an email address that doesn't belong to your school district, because you might be on a school district that doesn't have its own domain. So that's real simple to do. You could just type in um, an email address and click look up and hopefully they're there if they are you can then say okay add to my contact list so that they show up more often by the way we're gonna click the group again in earth science class um, if we go to um, just a fake email address show you how it is at gmail.com click search they don't show up at all so if that's the case, you need to actually then um, create that contact for them if they're not part of the domain. So this can take some time. The other way to go to your contacts through your email, you go here to mail and contacts. And that'll pull your contacts, same contact list we've been using. Pull them up in here. We're going to go to my earth science class I created. But this time when I click this um, Add to Earth Science, it actually gives me a blank where I can type in addresses much easier and click Add. I don't need to add them to my contacts anywhere else. Um, life's just pretty simple. Nice thing is if you have a long address like our district, so I can type in a fake name at snowflake.k12.az.us. I actually can come in here and highlight all of this. Control C will allow me to copy that address. And then now, when I want to add these names very quickly, I click here, type in the email address, and hit Control V, which will actually paste that email address into there. And I click Add. Um, they are now in your contact list. They're in your Earth Science list. So you can decide which way to go through this. The reason it's probably easier to go through the first way is simply because I could click on those names and add information, um, which you can still do from in here by double clicking on any name and you can actually um, come in here and give them, there it is, add a name, you can say fake name and so forth. But anyways, that's the easiest way to create contact lists.